In this video, I'll scientifically test the health and sports tracking features of one of Polar's newest watches, the Polar Pacer Pro. And I must say, I do like the design, but parts of the sports and health tracking features leave something to be desired. Specifically, I'll be testing the sleep tracking, heart rate measurements, GPS accuracy and step counting of the Polar Pacer Pro. And I'll compare those results to the results I got for other major brands such as Garmin, Whoop and Apple. If you're interested in any of these features in particular, there are timestamps in the description below and also on the timeline since I do not want to waste your time. Now, for those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Rob and I'm a postdoctoral scientist specializing in biological data analysis. To give the video some structure, I want to start off by looking at the heart rate accuracy of the Polar Pacer Pro. After that, we'll test the GPS tracking, followed by an evaluation of the sleep tracking accuracy, and I want to close off with a test of the step counting. Before I show you the results, I want to mention one thing off the bat. This watch was designed with running in mind. And this review here does not focus on the running aspect in particular. Some of the features I test, like the heart rate accuracy, are strongly associated to running, but I believe that my expertise in scientifically testing the health and sports tracking is the best way I can add value to the great videos that are already out there on YouTube that focus more on the running features. So with that in mind, let's take a look at the sports and health tracking capabilities of the Polar Pacer Pro and let's start off with the heart rate tracking accuracy since this is probably one of the main reasons people buy this device. Let's take a look. To do that I'll compare the heart rate measurements of the Pacer Pro against the Polar H10 ECG chest strap which can generally record my heart rate very accurately. We will start by looking at the easiest type of exercise for a watch to track, cycling indoors. Now this involves very little movement or tension on my arms and will therefore produce less noise. This should make it relatively easy for a watch to track my heart rate while I'm cycling indoors, which I tested for a total of four spinning sessions with the Polar Pacer Pro. And here we can see an overview of that accuracy. Each dot here is a single heart rate measurement with on the horizontal axis the value according to the Polar H10 ECG chest strap and on the vertical axis the value according to the Pacer Pro. Now the darker black the color the more dots there are in a certain area and we want as many points as possible to be close to the blue line because that means it agrees very well with the ECG chest strap. And as you can see most points are on or close to the blue line. So all in all this is looking pretty good. The correlation, this R value up here is 0.94 and this is pretty good. We want this R value to be as close to 1 as possible. To make those results a bit more tangible, here you can see an example interval indoor cycling session. Along the horizontal axis we have the time and my heart rate is along the vertical axis. In blue I plotted my heart rate according to the Polar H10 ECG chest strap and in red is my heart rate according to the Polar Pacer Pro. As you can see the red line follows along pretty well with the blue line, although it's not perfect. I did an interval training and often when I started back up again and my heart rate increases there tends to be a bit of a delay in the Pacer Pro also picking up an increase in my heart rate but it's not that bad. And also this first example was more the exception than the rule as most training sessions look more like this one and they show much less of a delay. As you can also see in this third example right here though here it did struggle a little bit in the beginning. To put these results into context, we can actually compare them to most of the other watches I tested in the past. That overview is displayed here. Now the correlation value I was talking about before is the metric I will use for this. We want that value to be as close to 1 as possible and that is displayed along the horizontal axis here. The further to the right and the higher a device is, the higher is its correlation with the reference device. If we plot the Pacer Pro in the same plot, we can definitely see it's among some of the better watches I've tested so far when it comes to heart rate tracking for cycling indoors. It works better than most of the Garmin devices I've tested so far, though worse than some of the Huawei watches I've tested. And as I mentioned before, the Apple Watch is still the best you can buy for heart rate tracking by quite some margin. Still, the Pacer Pro is not bad for this purpose. Next, let's move on to a more difficult type of exercise for a watch to track, cycling outside. Now cycling outside is more difficult for a watch to track because the actual heart rate signal that is recorded is more noisy due to the increased movement and also the additional tension on my arm and wrist. Uh, before moving to those results, 
If this video is proving interesting to you, a sub to the channel and a like or a comment on this video would be amazing. Now to the results. Here we see a similar overview to before, but now for cycling outside. And again, we want all the points to be as close to the blue line as possible. Unfortunately, there are now quite a few points away from the blue line, and specifically they're now below the blue line. This means that in these instances, the Pacer Pro recorded a heart rate that was lower than the one recorded by the ECG chest strap. And if we look at some example biking sessions, we can see why that is. Quite often the Pacer Pro is not able to keep up with an increased heart rate for part of the training, as you can see here for the beginning of the training for instance. For this second training session this is even more obvious, where it missed detecting my increased heart rate for most of the training. And this tends to happen quite frequently, as we can also see here. However, there were also quite some training sessions where it had much fewer difficulties, as you can see here for instance, and it was much better able to keep track of my heart rate. And the same goes for this training session right here. So there are definitely some examples of biking sessions where it was able to keep track of my heart rate. However, there are also enough examples where it wasn't able to keep track and there was a big deviation between the chest strap and the Pacer Pro, where the Pacer Pro basically always detected a too low heart rate. We can now plot a similar overview to before and compare the performance of the Pacer Pro to that of many other smartwatches. Again, the further to the right and the higher the device is, the better is its correlation with the reference device. And here we have the Pacer Pro and we see it's not performing that great. It is definitely in the lower half of watches when it comes to tracking my heart rate whilst road biking. Finally, let's take a look at one of the most difficult exercises for a watch to track, weightlifting. In general, most watches are not reliable enough at heart rate tracking while weightlifting, but there are one or two exceptions. So let's see if the Pacer Pro is one of these. I tested the Pacer Pro during three weightlifting sessions, and this is one example. Again, in blue is the chest strap and in red the Pacer Pro. As you can see, each time I do a set, my heart rate increases and the chest strap is able to track this, but the Pacer Pro is not really able to track this. This is likely because there's a lot of tension on my arm when I'm lifting weights, and this makes it difficult for any watch to detect my heart rate. Now the other two training sessions actually looked a bit better, of which this is the first example. Overall, I would say that the Pacer Pro is sometimes able to keep up with the increases in my heart rate, though it's definitely not perfect. If we now look at an overview again of the general performance of different watches, we see that the Pacer Pro is not amongst the better ones in terms of correlation. In general, based on these results, I would only think that the Apple watches and potentially the Huawei Watch GT Runner are somewhat good enough for tracking your heart rate during weightlifting. In general, I'd recommend using an ECG chest strap during weightlifting to get accurate heart rate results, since it's really tricky for any watch to track your heart rate accurately under these circumstances. However, as I mentioned, there are one or two exceptions that get close. So the heart rate tracking of the Pacer Pro appears to be quite good for static exercises like cycling indoors, but it struggles quite a bit more when the movement and tension on my arm increases. So keep that in mind when buying this watch for heart rate. Overall, I'd give the heart rate tracking of the Polar Pacer Pro 3 out of 5 stars. Unfortunately, I couldn't test the watch during running due to some knee issues I have. However, I suspect those results will be most similar to those while cycling outside, or perhaps a bit better because the bumpiness is not quite as severe. Now, the Pacer Pro has a number of additional sports and health tracking features, including GPS tracking. I tested the GPS tracking while cycling to and from work, and I wanted to test two things. One, how long does it take for the watch to get a GPS signal? And two, how well the GPS signals overlap when cycling the same route multiple times. Importantly, I didn't change the default settings of the watch, since I suspect this is what most people will use, which means it used the GPS plus GLONASS option for the GPS tracking. The GPS tracking results are displayed here for four times I cycled to work. I started the activity the moment I was ready to leave and I did not provide the watch with any extra time to acquire the signal. The markers indicate the moment it connected the GPS signal and as you can see it almost always acquired the signal almost instantly, which is good. It needed a few seconds to get a more accurate location each time, but all in all this is not bad. However, if we look at the actual agreement between the signals, this is not that good. Overall, there's quite some noise and deviation in each of the signals, and they do not follow along well with the rows I cycled on. As you can see, also here there's quite a bit of deviation, and it has me going through some buildings at times. In some moments it's a bit better, but compared to many other devices this is not looking very good. 
we mostly see the same thing for cycling back. The signal is acquired quite quickly, though there is a bit more of a delay than there was before, as you can see by the bigger spread in the points right here. And the agreement between the signal is just not quite as good as what we see for other watches. It is a bit better than what I saw when I was cycling to work, but overall there's still quite a bit of deviation between the signals. As we can also see here for instance, where two signals have me going through some buildings. Overall, I'd give the GPS tracking of the Polar Pacer Pro two and a half out of five stars, given that it acquires the signal quickly, but the actual tracking itself is quite noisy and many other watches I've tested perform significantly better. Next, let's have a look at sleep stage tracking. To check if the Pacer Pro can detect my sleep stages, I'll compare it to an EEG device called the Dream 2 that can actually measure my brain waves and has been shown to be relatively good at sleep stage tracking. Here I show an overview of the sleep test results. Now for getting an overall impression of how well the Pacer Pro performs, the Dream 2 should likely be good enough. However, the gold standard would be polysomnography, which we would like to try on the Pacer Pro in the future. Now on top here are the sleep stages as they were recorded by the EEG device, and on the left the sleep stages as recorded by the Pacer Pro. I wore both the EEG device and the Pacer Pro to bed for two nights, and we'll see how close the predictions of the Pacer Pro are to those of the EEG device. Now each column here sums to 100%, meaning that we can see what percentage of each of the sleep stages according to the Dream 2 was predicted as each sleep stage by the Pacer Pro. If they perfectly agree, all values on the diagonal should be 100%. First of all, we see that only about 47% of what was deep sleep according to the EEG device was also deep sleep according to the Pacer Pro, which is not that good. Just as often, at 48% of the time, when the EEG device detected deep sleep, the Pacer Pro detected light sleep. We can look at the quality of the sleep tracking more intuitively by looking at the individual nights. And that is displayed here for the first night. Now just to explain what you see here, on top we have the sleep stages according to the Dream 2 EEG headband, with the clock time along the horizontal axis and the sleep stages on the vertical axis. And on the bottom we have a similar plot, but now for the Pacer Pro. I've highlighted all the EEG recorded deep sleep in purple here. And as you can see, some of the deep sleep I had according to the EEG device was also detected by the Pacer Pro, but some of it was missed and a lot of extra deep sleep was also detected. If we look at the second night, which is displayed here, we see something similar. Some of the deep sleep is detected, but the Pacer Pro misses some of it and detects quite a bit of extra deep sleep throughout the night. Next, we see that a little under 60% of what was light sleep according to the EEG device was also detected as light sleep by the Polar Pacer Pro. About 21% was actually detected as being REM sleep by the Pacer Pro and about 17% as deep sleep. RAM sleep shows roughly the same percentage of agreement at about 55%, with most disagreement being with light sleep in this case. I did find it interesting that when I looked at the individual nights, the first night of sleep tracking did not look that amazing for REM sleep, which is marked in red here. You can see some overlap between the EEG headband and the Pacer Pro, but it's not amazing. However, looking at this second night, the results appear to be a lot better. We can see there were five clear REM sleep segments according to the EEG device, and these overlap really well with the REM sleep as detected by the Pacer Pro. Now, assuming the data from the EEG device is more or less correct, this means we can see the sleep cycles based on just the data from the Pacer Pro this night. So what is a sleep cycle? Well, you basically go through four to six sleep cycles each night, each one starting with deep sleep and light sleep, marked here in blue, and always ending in REM sleep, which is marked here in red. Now, based on this graph, I would say I went through one, two, three, four, five complete sleep cycles, and the Pacer Pro was able to pick up on it at least for this night, which at minimum suggests there's some interesting potential for polar sleep tracking, but I'll have to do some more testing in the future. Moving on, the awake detection shows about the same percentage of agreement as the other sleep stages, at about 54%. The main disagreement with the EEG device in terms of awake time is mostly with REM sleep and light sleep. However, if we actually look at the individual nights, we can see I didn't have that many awake moments at all, and most were actually detected quite well. That's also what we see for this second night. I had two clear awake moments, and these were also both detected by the Pacer Pro. However, it did detect quite a few extra awake moments. 
However, here in the morning when I woke up and was listening to some news, the Pacer Pro actually detected me as falling asleep again. And this discrepancy is the main reason why this awake detection percentage we were just looking at is quite low. So what does this mean for the sleep stage tracking of the Pacer Pro? Well, based on my first impressions, it doesn't appear to be great, but it does show some potential. The fact that it shows signs of potentially being able to pick up on the sleep cycles is pretty good, since this is something that most devices struggle with. However, let's now compare these results to those of other watches I've tested over the last years. The results for many other sleep stage trackers are displayed here. Along the horizontal axis we have the average agreement over the four individual sleep stages. And on the vertical axis we have the agreement of the worst sleep stage. The better the agreement, the more to the top right it is. And as you can see, the best agreeing devices include different Fitbits, whoop straps and the Withing Sleep Analyzer. If we now plot the Polar Pacer Pro in this same plot, we see it's in a bit of a unique position. It performs average overall, as we can see here based on the horizontal axis, with an overall agreement with the EEG device in the mid 50%. However, its agreement of its worst sleep stage is quite close to the average agreement over all sleep stages, indicating that it predicts all sleep stages about equally well. This means it's relatively high on the vertical axis compared to many of the same watches with the same average agreement. Still, it's definitely not amongst the best sleep trackers out there. So overall, the sleep stage tracking of the Pacer Pro is mediocre at best. I wouldn't buy the Pacer Pro for its sleep stage tracking specifically. I would therefore give the sleep stage tracking of the Polar Pacer Pro 2.5 out of 5 stars. The next thing I wanted to evaluate is the step counting accuracy of the Pacer Pro. To test the step counting accuracy, I went out and took exactly 4,000 steps while wearing the Pacer Pro. Now, since I do not like counting 4,000 steps in my head, I manually counted each step using this tally counter. I actually counted my steps in four segments of 1,000 steps, switching the tally counter between my left and right hand, which is what the right and left labels refer to here, and I wore the Pacer Pro on my right arm. Now these numbers right here are the actual steps counted for each of the four segments by the Pacer Pro. As you can see, the number of steps counted is always quite a bit lower than the actual 1000 steps I took for each of the four segments. At its worst, it was almost 100 steps off, as you can see right here. To put that into perspective, here are the steps counted by the Garmin VivoSmart 5 I wore at the same time. As you can see, though the VivoSmart 5 also deviated quite a bit, it did not undercount as consistently as the Pacer Pro did. Now, I must say that in order to see the actual step count of the Pacer Pro, I had to sync it with my phone each time, since I couldn't figure out a way of showing it on the watch face, so I hope nothing went wrong there. However, assuming it synced without issues, it does seem like it consistently undercounts my steps. I still want to see if it counts any steps when it's not supposed to count steps. For instance, while cycling or typing. However, based on the data I've collected so far, I'd give the step counting of the Pacer Pro 3 out of 5 stars. Overall, my first impression of the Polar Pacer Pro is not that great. Of course, we have to take into account that I focus specifically on the accuracy of the health and sports features. Now, limiting myself to judging just these features, I would say that there are better devices out there for health and sports tracking. The Pacer Pro did perform quite good when I tested its heart rate performance while cycling indoors. However, when I switched to cycling outside, it really showed some issues. If your focus is on heart rate, the Apple Watch is best for iOS and the Huawei Watch GT Runner is best for Android, at least based on my testing. The GPS tracking of the Pacer Pro was also not that good compared to many of its competitors, though I should still test some of the other settings. Finally, based on my testing, for step counting and sleep tracking, there are also definitely better devices out there. Overall, I therefore give the Polar Pacer Pro 2.5 out of 5 stars. Now, if your focus is on sleep stage tracking, I'd recommend Fitbit or the Withing Sleep Analyzer. Though for overall health tracking, the Aura Ring is also a good choice. Now, if you want the best overall sports and health tracker in a single device, the Whoop Trap is quite good at most of the features I tested, like heart rate and sleep, though the subscription model does make it quite expensive. Now, if you want to buy any of these devices and at the same time support the channel, there are affiliate links in the description below that do not cost you any extra and some even provide a discount. I recently created a detailed overview of which are the best and worst heart rate trackers and you can check out that video right here. If you're interested in sleep tracking, check out these videos on Fitbit or these videos on the Aura Ring. Now I hope this video informed you on the health and sports tracking of the Polar Pacer Pro. Thank you so much for watching and catch you in the next video.
one of Polar's newest watches, the Polar Pacer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 